Passover foods. Passover foods. Let's talk about it today. Hi guys, I'm Melissa from Little Kosher Lunch. Passover is a really long and painful holiday for those of you who observe and cut out all those grains, all the seeds. I don't know what you're cutting out, but I wanna talk about it. So on Passover, Jews, both Ashkenazi and Sephardic, they are cutting out wheat, barley, oats, rye, and spelt, with the exception of matzah, which is made within 18 minutes, I think, and that um, represents the hurried exodus from Egypt and slavery when Jews left so fast that their bread did not have time to rise. So matzah is the exception where wheat is going to be allowed in your diet for the eight days of the Passover holiday. As if that weren't terrible enough, many Ashkenazi Jews rule out these things called kitniyot or legumes. That includes seeds even. So you're then getting rid of things like corn, rice, beans, peas, sesame, sunflower seeds, peanuts, lentils. It just gets worse and worse. So I'm gonna try to present to you some really enticing, healthy, fresh, delicious, and hopefully affordable foods for you. This is not really a Passover Seder foods video, but it's really like life during Passover. So we're gonna talk about breakfast first. I'm gonna have a snacks and feeding children video coming out and those foods are really gonna cover you for lunches and then main dishes. So this could be dishes for lunch, but probably dinners that you'll then have leftovers for lunch the next day. And last and very importantly is Passover desserts. Is that high enough energy? <sighs> This is what I'm gonna be living on over Passover, you guys. So I did a lot of research for a few things that I look into. One is I like to go to the kosher supermarkets and just see what are the products available, especially their frozen section. The things that surprised me were zoodles, so spiralized vegetables, we got some to try. The other surprising things were frozen artichoke hearts that could be stuffed or filled. Gluten-free tartlet shells were very interesting to me. Probably my favorite wacky item was a Manischewitz solid chocolate Seder plate. Please comment below if you've ever purchased this item. I did do a grocery run and I bought some kosher for Passover packaged foods. I just put my quinoa in here, the little matzah crackers, some fresh boxes of matzah that you're used to seeing, the matzah meal. I did pick up almond flour and that is an item that's used in the dessert that I just tested. And I could not resist some Dr. Brown's. The things that you're probably used to seeing in the markets or in the kosher section are really highly processed foods, matzo ball mix, gefilte fish in jars, mostly not super appealing, also extremely expensive. Like I normally in my day-to-day -day life try not to eat things that come out of boxes. I will link below to Kosher on a Budget, which is a blog that I recently discovered. I really love their Passover sort of coverage and I hope to like put it on steroids. So let's look at breakfast for a moment. So for breakfast, I feel like at Passover time, there's a lot of emphasis placed on eggs and egg dishes as a source of protein and matzah. I like to call this eggs plus. Here is a platter of some things that might feature in your breakfast. You could do eggs any style, poached, fried, scrambled, egg puffs, however you like your eggs. So maybe it's eggs and avocado. Maybe it is eggs and like Israeli salad, you know, cucumber and tomato. If you spend any time in Israel, you're gonna have like carrots and cucumbers and fresh vegetables served at breakfast, which I think is great. These little potatoes I think are super beautiful. You can do like a hash brown potato or home fries eggs and onions, eggs and peppers, shakshuka, and obviously matzah brai, which is like the French toast of matzah, is another egg dish that you could be planning for your Passover week, for your eight days of Passover. I really believe in oomphing up like your vegetable intake, your fruits and veggies. So this is not super attractive at this point, but earlier in the week, I made a huge batch of asparagus. I sauteed asparagus and I sauteed leeks, so there's actually a couple layers here, and we've been dipping out of this and like serving vegetables alongside different proteins for the beginning of this week. But the other thing that this does for me is like I've meal prepped a huge bowl of veggies that I can stir into my eggs. I can put over pasta, 
when it's not Passover. You could put it on top of a soup or mix in with a soup. So having your vegetables like cleaned, chopped, and cooked and on reserve really speeds up things like breakfasts as well as dinners. Roasted beets are definitely on the menu for us this season. Squash that I'm gonna saute and just use up this week. And then I wanna move on to sweet things. Plain yogurt has no corn syrup or anything in it. Dried fruits like dates, beautiful honey, little jams, raisins, nuts, and an assortment of berries. All of this is really healthy food that you on a normal day would like your family to eat. This area right here is like the matzah and jam and butter, just like you'd have toast in the morning matzah with cream cheese and lox, and you can do all the toppings, so cucumbers, tomatoes, sliced onion, cottage cheese, and fruit, and even canned fruit could be fine. This is canned fruit in fruit juice, and I even sometimes drain off the fruit juice and put it over ice for my kids, and they think that's delish. I know you think it's weird that children eat grapefruit, but my kids like sour, and so it's exciting for them. So a halved grapefruit, these are free from my neighbor's tree right now. The oranges were on discount, and apple, bananas, a pineapple we got on a great price. I have flaked coconut. Do a fruit salad, do an ambrosia salad, do something interesting and fresh for your family, and that can be breakfast. I'm gonna just talk about my favorite things to have for dinner dinners now. I'm gonna just insert footage for you here. Please forgive me. I'm just one woman and my poor husband. <laughs> I love Jewish foods. I love brisket. I love lamb. I love matzo balls. I love gefilte fish even. Like I bought a jar of gefilte fish even though my poor husband is like, what is that in that jar? I steam my gefilte fish with carrots and then I serve it, just FYI, and a ton of horseradish. But anyway, let's talk about main dishes so that you can be stocking up and preparing or at least wrap your brain around what you're gonna be serving for the week. And I like to map it out, plan for leftovers in between, plan for meals out or satyrs out that you might be attending. So here's my list. Brisket obviously is on my list if you're a meat eater. I like to do my brisket with Lipton's onion soup mix and a sliced onion, wrap it in foil, shove it in the oven, maybe add some liquid, either water or beef stock around it. Chicken Marbella. I will link below to Chicken Marbella. It's from the Silver Palette cookbook. It is such a delicious, it's like marry me chicken. It's like the chicken that you make when you're dating someone and they're like, marry me now. Chicken Marbella calls for prunes, Spanish olives, a lot of garlic, dried oregano, capers. It's like in a vinaigrette. It is delicious if you're eating rice over Passover. You wanna like drink the juice that this chicken is in. It freezes great. You could make it today, freeze it, and then thaw it for your Seder. It's so great. If you do a um, potato kugel, it's great with potato kugel, mashed potatoes, you name it. Chicken Marbella, that's my number one chicken recipe for Passover. Any kind of fish, I just test drove some fish um, because it's Lent now and fish is on sale and it's great, so it's great to eat lots of fish. We did cod over thinly sliced onions with Kalamata olives. I dot it with butter and squeeze a lemon over that. That I just stick in a really hot, 425 oven for about 25 minutes. That was delicious. My five-year-old proclaimed that it was delicious, mommy. So even though my husband is not into cod, you might be into cod or you might wanna do a broiled salmon. I have a great recipe for that. I did it for Hanukkah. Eat your fish, you know? And if you eat your fish, then you can have your dairy dessert and still be kosher. Lamb shanks. I did lamb shanks last year to have for my Seder plates and my baby loved it. We're gonna do lamb shanks again. I have two of them in the fridge. They're expensive. Lamb shanks are expensive, but they're kind of fabulous. And so if you do it once a year, the lamb is sort of an important animal in the story of Passover. And I do my North African style, cumin, cinnamon, golden raisins, tomatoes and garlic and onions, and it's delicious. And again, that I personally enjoy over rice, but you could put that over quinoa or with potatoes. Some other things that I discovered while doing my research for you, this is a quinoa kale one pot meal that looks amazing. It's a Food 52 recipe. I'm gonna link it down below. You steam your quinoa, you throw the raw kale on top of it, put the lid back on, then the kale cooks, and then you like stir in a series of other things and it becomes this gorgeous one pot vegetarian meal. Obviously zoodles or spiralized vegetables 
vegetable noodles with a meat sauce or a red sauce are a great option. Um, matzo lasagna, there's a really great recipe I just saw that I'm going to link for you down in the description box. And I personally love spaghetti squash. So these are my mains for you that I wanted to share. Um, and now let's get to the really the most important part that most of you, and I know you, Marion, want to hear about is kosher for Passover cakes and desserts. Last year we did pavlova. Sherbet and a macaroon is a great dessert after a meat meal. The other one that's on my list to try for this year is a baked Alaska. So baked Alaska is like a thin layer of cake. I would do a kosher for Passover cake, a little bit of ice cream. You do it in the freezer in a bowl and then you cover it in meringue and, and blowtorch it. So now let me tell you, this is a shameless, shameless plug for Red Velvet NYC. I do some recipe testing for her. So my girlfriend started this company three years ago. You order a subscription box. It comes with everything pre-measured that you need. Red Velvet cupcakes are one of her signature things. She is not kosher certified yet. So this is for you guys who don't keep kosher or keep ingredients kosher or who are gluten-free people. And the dessert that I just tested for her is an almond orange cake, flourless, made with almond flour. So if you order a boxed kit of this beautiful dessert, you don't have to buy it. It'll just come with the right amount and you won't have excess like I did. I will link to it below. You can make it with cardamom. I left the cardamom out. I baked this fabulous cake. I'm going to go show it to you and I'm going to finally eat it because I've been waiting to film this video all day. It is the most magical cakes. I probably would never have tried it. So this is a kosher for Passover, gluten-free, flourless, dairy-free, and no added fat cake. So there was no oil and no butter in this cake. It was, it blew my mind. The only oil was to grease the pan and it took one pan. So if you are going to a Seder and need to bring a dessert, I highly recommend it. If you, have a loved one and you want to send a hostess gift, send this box. It's so nice. If you are home over the holiday break with kids and you need an activity to do, order this box. It's like, it's worth it. Okay, we're going to go to the kitchen. I'm going to show you the cake. I have not put my orange slices on top of it yet because I have children and they might have had some beef with that. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to top my own slice. These are my candied orange slices from One Orange and you would normally just top it beautifully with all those orange slices. It smells so good, doesn't it smell so good? It's like eggy and orangey and that almondy, like a uh, bear claw kind of deliciousness. It's so spongy, so there it is. I may have had some lumps. I think it's gonna be fine. Here we go. This is great. This is great. Very special thank you to all of you who have watched till the end to watch me eating this cake at the, at the end of my very long day. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being here. Please leave your comments below about what looked good to you. I would love to know. Let me know what you do for Passover if you observe what you do and don't eat and what your favorite dishes are because I think it helps a lot of people out who are just tired of the same old. Please hit subscribe, give it a like if you liked it, and please stay posted for my next video about feeding children over Passover, including snacks and lunch foods. Take care.